cold it's the teaser freezer. The Yeti lives in there, yeah. The teaser today. You were gonna do it. I'll let you. All right. So the teaser gonna be for the movie. And this is what we do. We take it out, we take a movie. You haven't seen it for anybody who doesn't know. Teaser's like a little commercial for a movie they put out. Sometime it play before an actual movie in the theater. Don't leave at the end of the teaser. It's just a sample. This one is a sample for a movie. And every time you go to the movies, my feeling is you're hoping to see your story on screen. Yes. Is that right, Hayes? Yeah. Sam, is this your desire as well that you go, hey, when are they going to tell my story? Because I'm not a war guy. I didn't do The Revenant. Uh, you know, for you, you're going, I'm not an army man. You're going, I'm not a guy who a lot of times people in these movies are having sex. You've never mm-hmm. done that. Yeah. A lot you of times, are. I am Sam. Yeah. Between yeah. this and Deadpool, the only times I want to see me, I'm up there. Deadpool, That's, you felt like was an accurate yeah. reflection of you, just of your humor. Uh-huh. Yeah. I'm f- fast. Yeah, yes, you're in terms so of being very fast. snappy. He's so quick very with the snappy. jokes, and we don't always get them all on mic because he's sort of running past the mic, and it's always he's sort of like he sort of like dips his head in to just be like, yeah. uh, "Oops, that came out wrong," you know, and like just yeah. zooms by. And you are sort of miming katana moves a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But just the funniest fucking guy. And so that shit rocks. And this also is about a very funny guy who's maybe a little more funny in the way that Hayes and I are, where it's very thoughtful and it's challenging you. Mm -hmm. And so appropriately, this movie that is me and Hayes' story and somewhat Sam's is called The Comedian. And it stars uh, Robert De Niro and it is the movie. And it's the green part at first. Yep. They always do that. Here he is. The city. My famous brother, Jackie Burke. How are the kids? Kid. We have one kid. She's an adult now. She's getting married. I thought she was a dyke. You say lesbian. It was his brother. And he says, I, uh, it's my brother. And uh, Robert De Niro says, have the kids, but they only have one kid, and she's an adult now. Yeah, and he said, and then he says, and then he says she's getting married, and he said, I thought she was a dyke. And instead of saying, well, first of all, like dykes could get married as well. Uh huh. So that's not a rational. But this is just how you know. And Hayes and I, when we talk to our brothers, mm. are always kind of. Using this language that's not necessarily PC, because that's just how we fucking talk. It's family. You piece of shit. It's family. I'm not always watching my language with my family. And my brother looks like Danny DeBito too, and I'm going like, you know, hey, it's me. Hey, I thought your kid was a fucking dyke, you piece of shit. And he's got to go like, oh, the appropriate term is lesbian, you know, yeah. because he's trying to be like, let's follow the rules. And so this is some of the, you know, the comedy that we like, that Sean and I like, which mm-hmm. is the real New York, like the cellar. The you know, these, New like, York, you get in the cellar, cellar and you just challenge people and you go like, oh, are you comfy in your yeah. safe space? I'll put you six feet underground. It's pretty safe down there. You know what I mean? Yeah. You like being in your little safe space, Mr. Millennial? Ah, I don't know. I got a box for you six feet underground, pretty safe down there. They will kill you. I will murder you <laughs> if you say you need a safe space. I will murder and that. And how's that for safe? Pretty safe down there, six feet under, you piece Play of it. shit. A possible gig. What do I have to do to join this birthday party? Do you want a job or you want to be an ass? Do I have to choose? Oh, I should. <laughs> and I'm always giving it to you. Yeah, and that's Edie Falbo, and uh, he wants to get a job, and she's the manager. And so what you also heard was the very beginning of Billy Crystal. Wait, Sorry. wait, 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 wait. No, that's okay. Billy Crystal's in the elevator. It's closing, and he said, what a sh... And so we're just going to hear the uck. <laughs> yeah, just a little... <laughs> But before Billy Crystal, it's like even with his manager in this professional relationship, she's going, you want a job? You want to be an ass? And you think he doesn't have a line for that? He's like me and Hayes. We got a line for everything. So even when you try to stick it to us, we get you back twice as hard and we'll put you six feet on the ground pretty safe. Wait, wait, wait. (laughs) Billy Crystal, interestingly, this is a little interesting Hollywood context. Billy Crystal was the comedian's. And so what happened in this scene probably 
is Robert De Niro's coming up and saying, hey, so I, it's my now, baby. Yeah. I'm taking the, the comedian. And he just fucking pisses on his forehead, basically. And Billy Crystal has to be like, what a schmuck. I and mean, he's talking about himself, I think, because Robert De Niro showed him up. Jackie Burke is in the house! Let's talk about the supportion of a town you live in. Hicksville! You getting this, Amy? What are you doing? You taping me? Uh, give me that. <laughs> Okay, pause it. So, yes. Okay. He calls No the- cameras at the shows. Don't nobody t- try to videotape my show. And also, you know, fuck all you people who are like oversensitive and stuff and also don't videotape my show. Your town's an abortion. That's a joke. Even better than saying dumpster fire, I think is to call a thing an abortion because it's such an ugly act. And then to also then go Hicksville. Yeah. Oh, on top yeah. of that. So it's like a hick abortion. Yeah. That's my kind of humor. And then when the guy who's maybe 30 years his junior and looks to be sort of like a strong like steel worker or something is videotaping his show. Yeah. I love that it hurts his feelings that he's being taped. Yes, I like comedian. This is the kind of comedian I like. The kind that if you get upset by their comedy, you're a pussy and you want to be in a safe space and you're weak. And but you, yeah, and if you, you record their maybe. show, they will write about it online. And they're mad, and they're like, somebody was out of line. They were videotaping my show, and it was all out of context that when I was saying abortion. And then that, and then when they're taping it, what I do generally, if it's someone who's thirty years my junior who looks to be some sort of strong steel worker, is I knock their fucking ass out. <laughs> Which is exactly and this what, is what Bobby De Niro did. The experience of watching the teaser and I imagine going to the movie is you are genuinely terrified that first of all you will be roasted from the screen. Oh yeah, and that I no, you can my, see me is my understanding is that is what will happen occasionally is certain people in the audience will be burnt to a crisp. Yeah. by Jackie Burke on the screen. Oh, he puts you right on the bunch burner. And he could come out of the screen and and punch you in sort of like a Ron Artest, like a movie version of Ron Artest. Yeah. He will he will come out of there and uh he oh. will he roast you and then Mouse at the Palace. I've been running the theater. How many hours did you get? Jazz oh. music, I love jazz music. My dad used to love your TV show. We've watched every episode. Always nice to meet a fan. Well we just had the one TV. Wow. Ooh. 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 Has he met his match? Now, I've never seen someone get the upper hand on this guy in a battle of words. Right. It's kind of like me, where I always am the one who has the final line and the last word, and I'm rarely left going, ooh, like I yes. just got got bad. I could take it. Right. I could dish it out and I can take it. Now, as long as you're not taping me. And it's the worst roast because. Oof. They used to watch the show. She used to she and watch her the dad show. Dad used to watch, but every they only of had one show. TV. They only had one TV, which is why. Now I got this joke right away. I didn't have to think about it for a little while, but I know that not everyone's sort of in schooled in comedy the way I am. I so, know, and so says, we can move on. Let's explain it to everyone else. So uh, let's say, for instance, I go to Hayes. Uh, you know, um, me and my sister used to listen to every episode of your podcast. Yeah, and I say thank you. And I go, we only had the one speaker. Right. And I and what I'm saying is she I guess was choosing what she we listened to. She was in charge to. of what we listened to. And so if I had been able to choose, I wouldn't have heard every episode. And so is maybe what I'm saying. I guess it's nice that well, your dad liked it so much. And now you say, ooh. Oh, right. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Well, now or, and like, now maybe we're going to fuck. Ooh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. She dropped the peas. Oh, she dropped the peas and they made her cry. F- They're volunteering doing community service. That's how they met. Let's see if he tries to charm Tonight. Her. What, like a date? Or it'll be just an appointment. I'm not sleeping with you. I'm I don't know a, what you're I'm after. Not. Look, you had a terrible day. You just said it. Let me take you to a place you might have a nice time. Okay. It's adorable when celebrities bring their hookers to the club. <laughs> this is at the cellar. Okay, so this comedian's on stage. He's taking her to see, and this is what I do when I'm in New York. I show ladies my New York. Mm-hmm. And maybe you've seen the one up above with the M&M store and everything. But what you haven't seen is underground. The underground. And this is not the same kind of underground where the safe space is. Where comedians don't follow the rules. And this woman who he brought with him, who's 45 years his junior, yeah. uh, 
is standing next to him and he's showing her, you know, uh, what's going on. And the comedian goes like, calls her a hooker right away. Goes, isn't it nice when they bring their hooker? And she throws her head back and laughs (laughs) because at the end of the day, women want to be called hookers. In the crowd. After everything I've done for you, I was there for you when you were starting out as a young man. (laughs) Okay. And once again, you don't want to get into a battle with me or Hayes with jokes because if you call my friend a hooker, I'm going to call you the gender that you're not. And that you cannot recover from. Yes. And it's not the same thing as saying that someone is gay, is a woman, and is but is gay like he did to his niece before. I thought it's she was different. a fucking dyke. It's different. It's saying that she was a boy. You are a fucking man. That was amazing. I feel like I'm high. Do you come up with all that on the spot? Yeah, sometimes, yeah. That was good. Not that time. <laughs> <laughs> it's implied that that time, that that was pre-written. Yes. Do you come up with all that on the spot? So what we've seen is jokes that feel extremely prepared and pre-written and old. Uh, and also barely jokes. Yes. That's what we've been able to see. But what the teaser is promising me is in the movie there's going to be something – that could be confused for being improvised. And it's being improvised by a guy who, when asked if he comes up with stuff on the spot, goes, eh, sometimes. So we know he's quick on his feet. Let's keep watching. Thank you. Are you free on Sunday? I have a wedding to go to, my niece's wedding. You could be my wingman. We have a few laughs. Uncle Jackie, you're going to get up and say a few words. No, right? we don't want it to become a thing. It's an honor being here to celebrate Brittany and Frankie's wedding. Can I address the 800-pound gorilla in the room? Flo. She is not... Was, uh, see, though, so this is what's so interesting. It's actually okay because she is not... She's not heavy set at no. all. So he said that she's the barely pound overweight. gorilla in the room, and it's a woman who is of a slender figure, uh, who is his brother's For her wife. age? For her age? She and, looks quite good. And she says she doesn't want it to become a thing, so she doesn't want her famous comedian brother-in-law to have mm-hmm. the microphone at any point, even though her daughter does want that. Um, and, of course, when he gets the mic, he uh, starts insulting her, calling her 800 pounds. And I think also Danny DeBito is going to be in his crosshairs a little bit, uh, you know, at least by association. Let's go ahead and watch this line again. Flo. What have you done to my poor little brother? He was six feet tall when you got married. And he's so small. Became small. And what he's saying is, you're so fucking fat. You smushed him. Just, this is, okay. The comedy code. Okay. I'm going to say this once. I will never repeat it again. This is all you need. Keep, Keep your ears peeled. Gay. Wrong gender, fat, short. And a hooker. Oh, that's right. And one likes to be called a hooker. Although, this is an insult to make her mad. The hooker insult is when you want to make a woman laugh. A life brother of yours. I don't know why you're yelling at him. Who are you with your no underwear dress? Don't comment on my dress. Now, she is starting to absorb a little bit of this. New York thing. She said, don't comment on my dress. Don't yeah. comment on my dress. And she, we see she's got a little fire in she's her. She's becoming a little bit of Jackie Burke, and I think it is maybe the twist that they are the same person. And Jackie Burke, yes, met his match, and I think it's a fight club situation. I want to know what your expectations are here. My expectations. When you look at my daughter and the way she's looking at you. I'm not looking at him. What are you talking about? <laughs> what so, a beautiful sort of homage to the taxi driving, mm-hmm. saying when he was like, what are you, are you looking at? When you look at my daughter, the way you look at my daughter, I'm not looking at him. And it's all yeah. sort of And now he's getting around. to watch this being like, oh, now I get to see it for once. And to see Harvey Keitel on screen with De Niro, Harvey Keitel being a man 27 years his junior, playing the father of, of De Niro's romantic interest – and saying, like, i am got my eye on you, mm-hmm. and the way you're looking, you know, is um, a good scene for a movie. We 
have three offers for appearances. What's it going to be? Go out there, big shot. They want you. No, this isn't you. He's in an so, old people house. He's Yes, you're about to hear some jokes at an old people house. Uh, his girlfriend uh, saying, this is not your crowd, the very right. young woman. Her the dad girlfriend is basically saying, this does not happen. She should be saying this has never, ever happened that, uh, like, a comedian is that booked. A famous comedian is booked at an old folks' home and that it is owned somehow by her father. So you saw his manager say you have three gigs to choose from. One of the gigs is at an old folks' home in Florida who's owned by the father of the girl who you're dating in New York who you were just eating dinner with in New York in the scene before this. Right. You know what I think she's saying when she's saying this is not your crowd? This is not happening. You are. This isn't a crowd. This isn't a scenario that could occur. And also, it's very strange that my father owns this old folks home and is booking a comedian for it. And you chose this above the other two offers that you had. None of this is real. You're a dancer? Yeah. Come sit on my lap. I'll spin you around like a drape. You're right. Okay. Yeah, okay. and that's a variation on the hooker rule. Yeah, it's and it's a fun thing to do where you they use like a woman's it. own thing against her. They always like if it. If she says she's a dancer, you can do this anything they say. It's like, oh, you know, like, you're a cook. I got a meal for you. Get yeah. down in my lap. I'll spin you around like a dreidel, you know? And then, so, and if she's a dancer or if she says, like, I'm a, uh, I'm an accountant, you go, like, I, I'll crunch some numbers on you. Get in my lap. I'll spin you around like a dreidel. And so he's kind of teaching you. I'm sorry. I almost stepped on the best line in the Well, world. also, we should point out, we forgot that when he just fucking laid out that steel worker ass out he went viral but i guess it was it, it, he was bad it wasn't bad it was off him. screen he went bad viral for uh beating up a steel worker and he got in trouble and then people didn't want to enjoy him and his comedy we anymore. can only infer that yes. but the trailer might actually literally tell us that because we're gonna hear right now from his manager i think after the joke yeah come sit on my lap i'll spin you around like a drape. <laughs> you're viral again over you're viral again <laughs> And how many times have we gotten that call, Hayes, from a representative? Hayes, well, you're viral again. I, yes. Twice in a month you've gone viral. Yes. This time the opposite way. The viral call, uh, you're always hoping, when you, know, when you see that it's your agent or whatever, you're always hoping that, like, oh, I hope this is, like, a good viral. When you call an old woman a whore and uh, – it's at an old folks' home where you're performing stand-up comedy for a place owned by your girlfriend's dad. Yeah. You are hoping to go viral, you know? You're saying, please let someone have taped it on an iPad or and something. And not just taped it, to have auto-tuned it like auto-tuned the news. Because yeah. this is what's important about this viral video. It is not just footage of his appearance. It is very, very heavily edited in a sort of auto-tuned the news, Tim and Eric Mm-hmm. All style thing, and and it's viral again. And this has gone viral, again. but for some reason, this is good for him. Well, last time I he guess was in making the way that, an like, insulting the, joke, right? That was nasty and being sort of a out of bounds comic, and they right. were taping him. Obviously, he was mad, and he went viral and got in trouble. Now he's making these sort of like raw jokes yes. that are sort of like. You know, not politically correct, and they're taping him, so now he's going viral. Right. Three million views in eight hours, and it is still climbing. You are on Kimmel, you're on Fallon. Ladies and gentlemen. The comedian's dream, okay? It's almost too good to be true. For you to have an auto-tuned video of you doing stand-up at an old person show up on Fallon. And Kimmel. Pack it in. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, I mean, I can't, I mean... That's movie magic that he got on both. The, the video. That's did. a little bit of movie magic. He is not actually a big guy to appear, but his video did appear. His video's there, yeah. On both of those. And he's about to, I think, fuck this young woman because she's talking into a whiskey bottle. Jackie Burke. The comedian. Close it up. <laughs> 